Hello, and welcome to the third episode of our multi-part series on the history of student media at Ithaca College. This time, it's about ICTV. But, as you just heard, it has not always been called that. For WICB News, I'm Michael Nemes. And I'm Christian Matry. ICTV, which was first called WICB-TV at its inception, first went on the air on March 3, 1958, in the basement of what's now the Tompkins County Board of Elections building at 128 East Buffalo Street. In the beginning, WICB-TV struggled with securing adequate broadcasting equipment. At the 50th anniversary of Ithaca College Television, two important early WICB-TV members, Roy Cully and Robert Earle, spoke about this. Well, in, 19, in the uh, mid-1950s, where, when we were the radio department, um, I had had uh, a, a, a little experience in TV, and I knew, everyone knew, that, that television was the coming thing and that, that we would have to have some TV. But television equipment at that time was awfully expensive, and the college was not really in all that good shape, as I recall, financially, uh, coming out of the war and all. And so it was a struggle. Uh, for a couple of years, I, I, we kept saying, golly, let's get some TV equipment. And in those days, um, in, in the absence of equipment... Well, we used what were called Brett's boxes. <clears throat> the Brett's box was a, actually a shoe box. And you cut holes in the shoe box to, to um, signify the different lenses on the camera, and so students would look through the through the shoebox to uh, to imagine what the scene would be on the on the stage, and it was called a Brett's box because it was designed by Rudy Bretz, who wrote the first television production book that I think existed. Uh, but it wasn't too long after that that that. Uh, that uh, <laughs> better heads prevailed and we were able to get some equipment. Another early issue was with the telephone poles broadcasting their signal. Uh, the, the cables were on the trees out in front of, uh, uh, of the uh, radio shack. And w we didn't know that Tony Siracci was going to be such a benefactor for the college. And we snuck up on the trees and connected and stole. You remember stealing the signal <laughs> yeah. from, from Siracci? And, and uh, uh, later on, when the, uh, the telephone company said, you know, you can't uh, use our poles, Tony Sirachi dug his own telephone pole holes and put the telephone poles up. Remember that? Well, actually, what happened was that it was taken, <laughs> it was actually taken, I think, to the halls of Congress. And uh, the telephone company backed down on its threat to take the cables off of this particular part of the telephone poles. Those cables are now owned by Spectrum Cable, which is why ICTV broadcasts on Spectrum Channel 16. In 1965, the Ithaca Bombers football team was first telecasted on Ithaca College's television station. Games are still being broadcasted today, in addition to other Ithaca athletic competitions, on Bombers Live. 1968 marked the year when the station's call letters were changed to WICB TV 13 and remained that way until the early 90s. In 1969, WICB TV 13 moved to Dillingham. Gosa Sagai, who graduated from IC in 1976, is a longtime TVDM teacher at the college and spoke to WICB and discussed the studio in Dillingham. In Dillingham, we had one big studio. Um, back then, and we have a bunch of, what, what it is really, we had a bunch of, you know, the radio station is there, it's very crowded, I mean, we have films, to, you know, film in here, it was very, very big in the 70s film, we, everything was uh, Bell and Howell and uh, shooting on those things, uh, so, uh, and videos start coming in, um, very, very important, a lot of equipment needs to be uh, portable equipment. Gosa was also one of the first classes at Ithaca College to use their color cameras in 1974. Election Center and Newswatch, the two longest-running currently broadcasted shows in ICTV history, were started in the late 1970s. In the 80s, more shows were started that are still produced today at ICTV, like The Gridiron Report and Big Red Faceoff. 1984 gave ICTV its first teleprompter. In 1989, the Roy H. Park School of Communications opened its doors and ushered in a new era of Ithaca College television broadcasting. 
With this new facility also brought a new name. In 1991, ICTV 54 became the station's call letters. In the 1990s, another ICTV staple, Fake Out, was first broadcasted. In 1995, ICTV became the first college TV station to webstream its programming online. And in the turn of the millennium in 1999, ICTV moved its broadcasting channel to 16 on Time Warner Cable. Pete Johans served as a TVDM professor starting in 2002 and was the advisor for ICTV from 2007 to 2012 and saw several changes at the station during that time. Uh, let's see. Well, Studio uh, B's uh, has undergone the most kind of uh, change in that uh, the control room was configured in the other way uh, when I first uh, got here. Uh, and so it was more looking out uh, at the studio, and then we switched it and moved it to the wall. Uh, there was no back row at all uh, when, uh, when I got here uh, in either of the control rooms. Uh, so it was just a singular kind of uh, front row uh, that the director uh, had to sit at, as well as the technical director and uh, Chiron, op character generator, operator, and audio. And so the control rooms and certainly the equipment in the control rooms, again, our reference monitor walls when I first came here were a bunch of separate TVs uh, that were, and now it's just, you know, one big kind of monitor or a combination of big monitors with digital signals. Uh, here's a big change. Our teleprompter when I, uh, when I first came here was a physical conveyor belt with a camera that was mounted over it. And so you would lay your paper scripts onto this conveyor belt and you would turn, uh, turn a knob that would adjust the speed of the conveyor belt. And as the scripts passed under the camera, those were shown on the teleprompter. Uh, so that, uh, that's a, a, certainly a big change. Studio B used to be kind of like Studio A, an empty box. <laughs> uh, and then I had put kind of a semi-permanent set in there uh, when I became the manager, uh, just so that we could have a bit more of a backdrop, but it wasn't, it was, it was kind of uh, part of the modular desk that we have now still that still is used. Uh, there was a backdrop that went with that. Uh, and then um, a few years ago, we decided to uh, really upgrade Studio uh, B set. And not that it was modeled after David Muir's set, but it was more designed by the person who did David Muir's set. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, David Muir's set is much more complex yes, uh, than <laughs> uh, than what we have. But again, that really uh, that was a huge change uh, for uh, for us, uh, and I'm thankful to Bob Regan every day for uh, spearheading uh, the uh, the initiative to bring that set in here. I want to end this piece with a statement about ICTV from current general manager of television operations, Jeremy Menard. I think the one thing about ICTV to me that is unbelievably special and stands out is the alumni support is just, it's second to none. Um, it is very often during any given semester, if you're in the first floor of the park school, you see someone kind of walking around and pointing at stuff, maybe with a family and you talk to them, it's an alum. And it's someone who mm -hmm. is passing through the area. They're in the Finger Lakes. They happen to be in Ithaca. They're close enough that they made the trek up this way. And all they want to do is show their son or daughter or their wife or, or whoever else is with them. They want to show them where they spent their entire college career. Mm -hmm. When you talk to people at ICTV, so often do you hear people say, I spent my whole life down here. I spent my whole time down here. And, and Michael, you're very much the same. You spend all your time here on the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think that's part of the park school kind of culture. Uh, people here who are involved with TV and radio, they love it, and they can't imagine themselves doing anything else. And at ICTV, we really pride ourselves on giving people the opportunity to try things and get involved and to create your own show and be involved and work with others and, and do all of that kind of stuff. So um, the alumni support is also what makes it great and seeing people come back and think so fondly of their time that they spend here. For WICB News, I'm Michael Memes. And I'm Christian Matry.